So God just gave me an interesting thought to share with you guys. And like with everything, I just want you to really pray about the things that I am about to say, right? We know that the Bible says in the last days, there'll be a strong delusion, doctrines of devils, you know, seducing spirits. A lot of times people think someone is anointed when the reality is that person just matches your preferences. So the Bible talks about having itching ears, right? I like what this person is saying. I agree with what this person is saying. I like this person's delivery. The problem with that is everybody has an audience nowadays, but that doesn't mean that everybody's telling the truth. Everybody has an audience, you know, the LGBTQ, Black Lives Matter, the, the witches, the Democrats, the Republicans, this denomination, that denomination, the Black Hebrew Israelites, you know, everybody has a group of people that, you know, Muslims, they subscribe like this is the truth. And so when you have these groups, being in that group can reinforce delusion because there's only one truth, there's only one way. So somebody is lying. And so, you know, I'm just thinking about these different things when I think about, you know, the deception that is out there. And I just had this thought, you know, David going down to the battlefield to confront Goliath. Realize the children of Israel were out there. They were supposed to have an identity as being chosen, right? We are the children of God, right? The promised land, all of that kind of stuff. But they had all the armor on, right? But none of them were fighting Goliath. And David had to come down there amidst all those soldiers. And he was the one that went to war. He was the one that stood toe to toe with Goliath. There's a lot of people, they've got all the armor on. They, they've used all the right theology. They've, they've went to Bible college. They use all the right words. But the problem is your life is showing me that your theology is broken. How many people have we seen who got all the right armor on? right? They, they, they say all the right man-made words. They check every box. And then year after year, we see pastors get exposed. Year after year, we see influencers get exposed who were supposed to be, you know, the ones who had the right theology. They were in the right camp. And then you have the Davids who are going against the grain, who refuse to put on Saul's armor, right? And they say, hey, you're a false prophet. Go back there with your, your few sheep. You do not belong here, right? Something was off in their mentality. So they were dressed like they were ready for war, but they weren't about that life. People dress like I'm a Christian. They dress like, you know, uh, just like the Pharisees with their religious robes, but they're deceiving people. And so there's a lot of people that they dress the part, but eventually their lifestyle shows that their theology is broken. So you're a Trinitarian, but you're sleeping with underage girls, you're, you're doing drugs, you're a Pentecostal, you know, you, women, you don't wear pants, but you hike that skirt up and you fornicate and you commit adultery or whatever it is, whatever denominational, man-made, religious words you want to use, right? Everybody's claiming to have the truth, but the thing is, are you really living a lifestyle? The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. And what I've come to see, it's the same thing. If you don't put on Saul's armor, religion, they say you're a false teacher. You're a false prophet because you need to do it like this in order to be a success. And then the problem is when you go out there like David and you don't do it their way, you break all their religious rules and you slay Goliath. A lot of times they want to ignore it because they want to believe, no, you need this armor on for us to validate you. If you don't put this armor on, you're a false prophet. If you don't pick a denomination, if you don't let us put you in a religious box, I don't care how many Goliaths you slay. I don't care how bold you are. And what's so crazy is you're talking about me while you're sitting on the sideline. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm just talking about from my experiences, things that I've prayed about. And I know it applies to a lot of you because you cannot be put in a religious box. You see the same thing that the Holy Spirit has been showing me for years. Unity in the spirit. Who has the spirit of God? I don't want your religion and your tradition. Too many people have been exposed from these different camps. Who's actually filled with the Holy Spirit and following the leading of the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you something. A false prophet is not going to tell you to go pray about everything for yourself. A false prophet is not going to go tell you, uh, you know, hey, really genuinely, you know, don't take my word for it. Study for yourself. 
Pray with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. You don't have to agree with me. More, more times than not, and people don't think this, a real false prophet is the ones who say, I am the authority, I'm right, this is what it is, and if you don't believe this, you're wrong. That's why I always tell people, look, if you don't agree with me, pray. Ask God to show you what the truth is. You see a lot of these religious Pharisees online, they say, no, this is what it is, and this guy's false, this girl's false, because they don't do it like, and a lot of times, it's really people arguing from a place of unbelief. Right? Oh, they think tongues is for everybody. They're a false teacher. No, you just don't believe it. Oh, I don't believe in deliverance. I don't believe it. Whatever, whatever it is, a lot of times these people, the true false prophets, are the ones arguing from a position of unbelief. I believe everything that the Bible says. These signs shall follow them that believe. Acts 2, the first altar call, repent and be baptized and ye shall receive the gift. He's a false prophet because he says people need water baptism. Well, Peter did too. It was the very first altar call. He said, repent and be baptized and you should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We're not going to get into all that again. We've had those conversations for so many years. But my point is, maybe the very best of false prophets, they come in the right packaging. And it's not the one that everybody is saying, oh, this guy is so controversial, this, this, this. Maybe it's the ones that everybody's approving of. They've got on Saul's armor. But what does your life say? I've, I've just, met, you know, I'm just going to be real. I've seen so many people, you know, call me this and call me that. I said, but what does your life say is when compared to mine? When you look at our lives and you see the fruit of my life, God just keeps blessing me. No matter how many people try to tear me down, you know, I'm out here taking a stand for truth. Out here, am I doing it perfectly? No. But I notice a lot of times some of the guys who do the biggest talking, that's all they have to boast about my armor, but you're not fighting. I'm right, I'm theologically, but what are you doing if you are so theologically correct? Where's the boldness? Where's the slaying the Goliaths? Where's the going out and preaching the God? What are you doing besides telling everybody you're right? A lot of times those are the ones, the biggest ones, you know what, that are deceiving people. Because the ones teaching from a place of unbelief, they're spreading that unbelief. And then because of that, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because of that, they spread that unbelief. And now there's a lot of people who don't get to walk in and experience all the things that God has for them because they listen to somebody who reaffirmed their unbelief who was wrong. Be careful that we're not justifying people who put on the right religious garments what is the fruit of their life saying? I've seen so many people through the years, Marcus is a wolf, he's a this, he's that. No matter how many things come true that I say, no matter all the good things that God does, because I won't put on Saul's armor, he's a false prophet. And it ain't no pity party. I just believe a revolution is coming. God is going to shake up the American church. And a lot of people are going to start saying the things that I'm saying because they're going to get tired of it year after year, exposure after exposure. This person had the right theology. This person had the right doctrine, but they're cowards. They're living double lives. They're not living holy. Something to think about. Go to www.marcusrogersministries.org if you want to support what we're doing here in Chicago. God bless.